three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Gentlemen, we Welcome. have made it to football season. We've made it to our first like reaction podcast here. We launched the O-Line Committee back in late April, I want to say. Sounds and this, right. is, this is the first time we get to react to actual regular season NFL football games. I mean, this weekend was almost overwhelming, right? It was no, just like, ah, there's so, there's so much to watch. It's so much to do. Alex wanted like 25 more games, it sounds like. Hey, well, do you have, do so you have YouTube TV, Alex? Do you have YouTube no. TV? No. The multi-screen oh. for college football oh. on YouTube TV is oh. literally oh. orgasmic. It's orgasmic, dude. You have different channels that have four games on. You can be like flipping back and forth Dude, between eight different football games. And it is almost because you're like, you, who do I watch? What? Who do I it's see? Great. What's happening? And what then you put on, on NFL, you have the four screen. You have the NFL Sunday ticket on one. You can put the other close games going on the other. It is YouTube TV. Bravo. Hats oh, off yeah. to you. You guys did a great job. Jackie, give him a hand. You got one in there. I know you got it's something good. in there. It's good. There we go. There you go. We we'll give him a hand. It's football porn, man. I mean, it is like, <laughs> honey, honey, what are you doing in there? Shh. Shh. Eastern Michigan's on. <laughs> Eastern Michigan. I literally, I told my wife, I was like, I'm bringing my monitor up. I'm bringing another. I'm, I'm going to have, because you can plug in just a Roku or you can cast from your iPad. I'm going to have four TVs in the living room on Saturday and Sunday. It's, it's going to be, be, and I'm going to just be a terrible parent, awful parent. <laughs> like, don't even, See, I'm don't on even the other side. Son. No, no, no. You say that your kids are just young enough that you don't have to worry about anything. But when they do get to be my kid's age, you'll be a terrible fan because you're not going to be able to watch anything unless it's from 10 o'clock at hey, night till four in the morning. It's for my work, Boone. It's for I, my job. It's Sundays, all research Sundays, and development. Dude, Sundays are a work day. Yeah, you forget we're partners. We have the same job. It's just when the yeah, wife. Yeah, but the is problem like, is if someone gets hurt, guess what? They're not calling you. No, They're I know. Calling me. I'm just and the last know, thing I want to be is like, hey, hey, oh gosh, I just got hurt. Oh, sorry, I'm at little Johnny's football game here. I didn't see you blow your <laughs> knee up. That's not how that works. Hey, I'm just telling you. You say that until Verman's like, Dad, you're not coming today, and you're gonna be like, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be in the huddle. I'm there. Dude, it's hard to say no to the kids, right? And then when you have a bunch of them, you're like, oh, my God, I'm way committed. But, dude, what a wild week. Can we just yes. talk about the insanity that this weekend brought about? I mean, yes. from starting from Thursday night, because, Jay, you brought up a great point. KC's in a little bit of trouble. Right, all the way till Monday night, and the Jets are in a hell of a lot of trouble. And it's hilarious because I was actually up, up at Kowalski's the other day. Shout out to them. Best meat department. And Alex lost world. his uh, kindergartner uh, at Kowalski's. We I were did. on the phone. And he, goes, Where did I tell I you got, he was. He goes, I got to call you back. I can't find my kid. <laughs> I literally the walk aisle. in the store. Bear, I go, Bear, grab a cart. He's got this little, tiny little cart that the kids love. He grabs it. And I'm on the phone with Macadac, and we're doing our thing. And all of a sudden, I turn around, and I'm like, this is, I go, Mackie. I literally just walked in here. I go, <laughs> where did I say he was, though, Mackie? The cereal aisle. And sure as shit, I come around the cereal aisle. He's got like three boxes of Lucky Charms. Like, Dad, look what I got us. And I'm like, oh, my God. Pure panic for a minute, though. Because at first I was like, oh, my God. He was literally just behind me. But all the way till Monday night. And it was funny because I went to Kowalski's. And the, the cash register with, uh, guy, Ray, was telling me. He goes, well, you know, at least the backup's pretty good. And I was like, Ray, not so sure you know so much about the Jets. Because now I feel like the whole season has just plummeted. <laughs> the, the, the minute he went out there, by the way, Jay, you and I were talking. Hold the on. Other day Can about we talk how, about how you're on a first name basis with the cashier at Kowalski's? I know everybody out there. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Carl and Ashley and Kathy. Are you kidding me? Let's do this. I know everybody. We should, let's get them all. We should, the guys we should, over get, we should get them on the Sean. show. Come on. Let's guys. carve Hello. out like five or ten minutes on every episode. It's Alex talks to Ashley from Kowalski. So yeah. what's the if, if it gets some free pies, he'd do it. Dude, <laughs> it's not even that. It's just, you know, people have questions and I have answers. And sometimes I get caught talking way too much and way too long. And that's why I'm always late to practice. So <laughs> it's all right. Which is well, right. you brought you brought up the Jets and uh, and and the forum that we usually use here, the, or like the format is uh, dumb football questions. It's the best way for uh, an idiot fan and media dweeb like me to ask questions to uh, two former NFL offensive linemen. So let's talk about the Jets. So my first dumb football question for you guys is, what do you think the vibes like after what happened on Monday? So you you lose Aaron Rodgers to a torn Achilles. You also win the game. 
and it's like the stadium's going crazy. Like w- once everyone comes down, what what's it like 48 hours after Monday? I'll tell you exactly what it's like. I was talking to my son about this. Everybody's looking at the defense and we're all like, how long can you withstand this? How long can you be great for with us scoring minimal points? Like, is it eight weeks? Is it six weeks? Or at least until we can figure out our identity, because I'm telling you right now, there has been no dramatic change like that. Like we, Jay, you and I were talking about it. It's been forever since you've seen a team go so high to so low, so fast. And they're instantly in panic mode because it's, what do we do now? Like Zach Wilson wasn't the answer last year, guys. He's not the answer this year. We put all of our eggs into this one basket. He brought on all these great players, which is great because you do have great guys around to lean on. Mm -hmm. It just becomes, can Zach handle it? And if he can, the defense is stout enough that they can last a long time. And if you get games where you're out there crushing people and you can relieve the defense a little bit, that's huge too. But right now, they were at an ultimate high. I think everybody was for them. And now everyone's kind of like, man, whoo, how about those Giants, huh? Whoo, buddy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So there's probably wars going on over those two teams. <laughs> But I mean, from the emotional side, I think you you have the high of the win, and then you come into you come in on Monday, and or Tuesday, I guess it would be. You come in on Tuesday, and you're kind of looking around like, now what, right? Like everything is different. The game plan is going to be different. How we approach the practice, how we approach everything from an offensive side is completely different, right? The good news is, I think that they didn't anticipate Brees Hall being as far along as he is, and he looked fantastic he's a dude right he looked phenomenal so they're gonna go okay now that we don't have Aaron Rodgers we're gonna have to really lean on on Brees Hall and it's probably a really good thing we also got Dalvin Cook so we can have two of these dudes back here to really lean on this run game and get going but you could just see how the game plan got immediately simplified immediately right no big long route concepts short quick passes get the ball out of his hand give easy throws that's going to be what the Jets offense looks like here for the next couple of weeks before Hackett and them really have to kind of go back to the drawing board and be like, okay, what do we need to be now? Because our identity is completely gone. Right. And I will say this, and this is kind of crazy. If you watched a little bit of Jordan Love play, he looks so much like Aaron Rodgers. Did you see that pass to Musgrave where yeah. he kind of like fumbled the ball and he just stood there like, nah, okay. Yeah. And then like, and it was like, Oh my God, it's insane what's going on right now. Like one goes all the way down and he's not playing the rest of the season. And then all of a sudden this Jordan Love character who everyone's like, what's going to happen? He's starting to look a lot more like Aaron Rodgers. And I'm kind of like, man, this guy's really fitting in really well. He, got to, stu- was- he got to study it for years. Dude, well, you know? let's also, can we just take a moment and talk about how bad the Bears defense is? Easy. Give Hey, listen. Don't take away a win from a team. Come on, you know I'm how not hard taking away a win. Dude. I'm not taking away a win, but that Bears defense has got – problems i want to be in the room i want to go back to to your playing days go back into your playing days and i want like some weaselly reporter to come up in the locker room after a week one win and be like it was a nice win but i mean that defense you guys faced was garbage right does that lessen the victory uh in your minds not at all but we're talking heads now we're not players anymore (laughs) we're not we're we're on the other side we're talking heads i would never (laughs) say that to a player i'll say that to your bald head though okay it's not a problem yeah absolutely right yeah so I, 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 on the Jets fan front, man, like I don't, you know, it, things happen in sports and whatever, but is that the most Jets thing ever? It's just they're they're always the, they're always like, uh, is it Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner, like the Acme of like yep. Anvil falling on their heads? Yep. They're all excited. It's the most excited they've probably been in decades, right? And decades. then this happens for dude. There's like I think like DraftKings or one of these had a. If you take Aaron Rodgers, we're going to give you a freebie. If he gets one passing yard, you get like a whatever. It's like four plays into the season. It's it is one of the most Jets things I think I've ever seen. And I don't mean to clown on the on the fan base. I feel as a no. as a Vikings fan who gets the same thing happen sometimes. Like uh, I just man, I can't imagine. I mean, I you I wish I would have been there. I want to hear how silent that stadium was when he sat down on the turf. Right when he sat down after getting back up, then it was just like you could see when he sat down, like yeah, this Think this good. isn't going to be good. I mean, and I watched a bit of the Manning broadcast too, and you saw Peyton Manning was just like, like he put the hands on the head, and he immediately he right knew away. he immediately knew, knew this wasn't going to be good. There's a theory, by the way, floating around because Peyton well, did was. Did you see the dis- guy that posted it two two hours before? 
He was saying, oh, Aaron the, he pre- the pre- predicted the Achilles injury. He's yeah, like, Aaron weird. Rodgers is going to tear his Achilles, a wet turf, and a 40 year old quarterback. And I was like, yeah, two hours before kickoff. One day, it just speaks player. more to the turf point. Like, you got to get rid of the turf. I'm telling you, you have to find a way to get rid of it. Well, I mean, they were even bragging about it on Monday Night Football. They're like, there's been four <laughs> events in here in the last four days. It's had over this many people. There's a two giant concerts on Thursday or Friday and Saturday. And then we had Sunday Night Football here. And now Monday Night, like, that turf was beat up and it rained nonstop. Like that stuff, not there was good. no sliding around. Your cleats were going to stick in that thing and not move. Like turf's got to go. It's got to go. It's, so it's can you, too. and the NFL PA put out a, basically a demand saying the same thing you guys just said, but just like going back to the Manning cast thing for a second, I don't know if, if, if you guys stuck with it, but it was second half and Peyton was just despondent the whole time. Right. Cause here we go. It's uh, Omaha Productions. It's Aaron Rodgers. Here we go. And then all of a sudden, Zach Wilson's in the game in the second half. And 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 Peyton's just leaned back with his little sweater vest. You know, when's this thing going to be over? And Eli asks him, all right, so second half, Peyton, Zach Wilson has thrown 12 passes so far. How many is he going to get to? Is he going to throw 20, 24? And Peyton goes, three more maximum. <laughs> and as the, <laughs> disgusted, as the ball's being snapped, it was that play where Zach Wilson ejected backwards like 20 yeah. yards to the 50. Yeah. And Peyton Manning, literally, he's like commentating live. The nicest, most like diplomatic guy, right? And he goes, oh, here we go. Now we're going to run backwards. Okay, <laughs> guy. Let's go. He has He's probably lived. But, dude, but there's a theory. There's a theory because Omaha Productions, I think, is the production company for quarterback, the Netflix series. Yep. Yeah. So there's a theory that maybe Aaron Rodgers was on season two of quarterback and Peyton was processing like, well, uh, we're screwed. Yeah. I mean, we're going to follow him over to like the, the rehab center every episode. Right. I guess we could. That might be interesting, actually. I mean, but. To, to put a bow on this, though, I just really hope that's not the last time we see Aaron Rodgers play football. There's a chance. There really is a chance. I mean, if this doesn't go well, Achilles injuries are, what, nine months till you're cleared? Yeah. I mean, th- at 40? Like, those aren't things that – I mean, those are things that guys have a hard time bouncing <clears throat> back from as young men. I just hope it's not the last time we see Aaron Rodgers in a helmet. I thought that's what it was. I thought that was the last time we saw him in a helmet because he is 40, and that is an Achilles. And that is like, dude, an Achilles tear coming back from that at that age? Like, you can take care of your body as much as you want. Your body is your body. I mean, and- the good news the good news is, though, he's got unlimited money to do whatever he has to do, stem cells right. or whatever he has to do. Like, he'll Maybe find he the best be care. And, like, there's a chance he comes back, but I just, man, that's a tough That's thing. tough. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, r- real quick, would you – we'll get to some other questions here, but – so Zach Wilson's the starting quarterback. Robert Sala came out, said what he had to say, but they're probably going to be sniffing around. I mean, it's not For like sure. there's a bunch of options. Do you do you just roll with Zach Wilson right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. To. What else you are you going to do? And you, I mean, if anything, you're you bring, hope that you, a little bit of Aaron Rodgers rubbed off on him, or at least yeah. a little bit of something. Now, Matt, Matt Ryan hasn't officially retired. Stop he it. did broadcast the, the Vikings Stop Bucks it. game on CBS. By the way, <laughs> yeah, Aaron. And how about Aaron how about the, how about his uh, how about his counterpart going like, yeah, Matt Ryan here, you know, twenty eight to three Super Bowl loss here. And he just completely threw it in his face. Did you see that? <laughs> I missed that. Oh, part. I'll find the clip for you. Like he <laughs> oh, literally you gotta pull that he up. brings it up in like conversation. And Matt's just like. Oh, that is <laughs> just like Wait, stared at him. somebody like this is oh, my friend. Dude, Remember, was... he lost the Super Bowl a long time ago. What Up a loser. 28 to three. Yeah. <laughs> Your analysis does not matter today. <laughs> no. uh, what do you think? Matt? What do you think on that play? It doesn't matter. You're worthless. You blew a four touchdown. Hey, in this I, I mean, I think this, I think hey. probably Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is still out there. Colt McCoy is still out there. Colin Kaepernick said that he reached out. <laughs> But like, there's there's some other veteran quarterbacks they're definitely gonna have to bring in though. I will say this yeah. though, with and it's, I'm not you know I was all about the Jets this year and I'm super sad to see it go down the way it does. But with Aaron being out this year, it's kind of like the end of the whole old quarterback dynasty. Like he was really the last one left before you mm. think about all these new guys that are trying to make names for themselves. Obviously Patrick's at the top, and then everyone's following down from there. But it's like, dude. You're going to be looking at a whole new regime all over, and it's going to be interesting to see what people do. Like, it's, it, I for, I don't see somebody coming in and taking Zach Wilson's spot the rest of the year. Like, I think you're too no. deep into the season. There's nobody that you're going to bring in that you're like, okay, I need to see what this guy does next year. I think that if anything, you're looking at this like, look at all these amazing pieces and parts around Zach. Let's go out and do what we can do to win this year right now. And two, if you bring somebody in 
you better be prepared for what happens in that room too. Like if you do go out and get some crazy try, like if you were to try and bring some Matt Ryan in, you would just destroy the whole team. Like the whole team's just going to, cause Zach's going to be like, so it's not my show. But if you bring in a Carson Wentz, it's more of a, Hey, listen, this is your show, but we need to have an, a legit backup for you. Like, but if mm-hmm. you start bringing in somebody that's like going to push names around, it's like, what are we doing? Just give the team to Zach, let him roll start with your offense what you have and try and grow from there and let your defense dominate as much as they can like the most important thing for them is going to be ball possession they need to yes. hold on to the ball to give their defense a break no yeah. can you Reese. guys um so rogers i saw this trivia question this morning maybe you guys already saw it you can cheat if you did so rogers is the oldest quarterback in the nfl yep. can you tell me who the next oldest quarterback is in the nfl right now probably uh kirk cousins he's second by like 200 days, he's the second oldest quarterback. Kirk. Is he a starter? Mm-hmm. He's starting quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, the, the the three oldest are all starters right now. Hey, is it Kirk's somebody that you could never guess? No, I think it's someone who may get Hall of Fame consideration at some point. Is it Russell? No, he's getting close though. Russell's Russell's getting up it's like there. 34. He's getting so the, Hall of uh, Fame uh, contention. Give me the the 35 year olds. 35 year olds. Give me AFC, NFC. Give NFC. Me, me, let me cut it down in half. And, and he's a start. Oh, is it Gino? No, he's like 31. Uh, Gino's not that old. 30, 31. Oh, golly. I feel See, like I should I'm getting, know this. I know. I'm getting my stuff. Give me a division. Hall in, the, in, in the Seahawks division, NFC West. Oh, who's starting for? Who's starting oh, for? Oh, Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Yeah, Matthew Stafford. I totally Isn't forgot crazy? Stafford. Start, no, because I, I totally forgot he was but, starting. But he's 35. That dude's old. Yeah. Not that I went, 30, I went. I went and watched Matthew Stafford on an official visit to Arizona State when he was with the Bulldogs <laughs> with Georgia. It was yeah. him, no Sean Marino, AJ Green. Like I half went down there just to watch that team play, yeah. <laughs> and I can remember watching him in college. Hey, yeah, he's, it's kind of crazy, I, dude. Matt's taken so many hits in his career that he just didn't have to, and still did, and he has not done any. I feel bad for that dude. All right, second dumb football question here from uh, from week one. So we all had very strong opinions on who looked good, who didn't, who was going to make some noise week one for the season. Now that you've seen a week of football, which team have you changed your opinion on the most? Or have you doubled down on your opinion more uh, most after I'll seeing I'll the I'll full slate? So I'm going to double down on, on the Jacksonville Jaguars like I did last week. You know, I thought that they were going to be – they went out there, they fell behind, they kept their poise – and they, man, Calvin Ridley, you add Calvin Ridley to that team, that is a legit contender. Like, an ETN looked great. That hustle play where he blew by Ridley and blocked that guy, he looked like he was moving at Mach 10, right? And Lawrence took care of the football. I doubled down on the Jacksonville Jaguars. My red flag concern meter is through the absolute roof for the Kansas City Chiefs. Really? Yeah. Through the roof for the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, you talk about, hey, can Mahomes do it all? Can he still win? That receiving core – is bad. I mean, I saw Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony. I saw a stat. Tony had more drops in Thursday night football than Larry Fitzgerald had in his entire career. What? Crazy. Larry Fitzgerald Crazy. had three drops. Three drops <clears throat> in his entire career. Dude, Tony had four. Larry? Better stat. Guess how many snaps Tony played on Thursday night? Probably six. Sixteen. He had sixteen snaps and four drops. Oh, that's man. a bad day at the office, friends. There, and if Kelsey's kind of dinged all year, right? I mean. If he's not, if, here's the thing. If I'm if I'm game planning the Chiefs, I'm going okay. We're just going to double the crap out of Kelsey. We're just going to double the crap out of him and make someone else beat us. Yeah, Mahomes will deliver good balls, but can they get separation? Are they going to be running wide open? My no Chris Jones too. I know he's back, but he's going to be a little rusty coming off, not practicing a whole lot. My my, I'm I'm very concerned about the Kansas City Chiefs. Interesting, I interesting. Like I mean, real quick on the Chiefs. You know, there, I think sometimes th- this has happened before in Brady's career, too, where you just like you have this crazy good generational quarterback and you just, well, yeah, they they lost uh, Tyree Kill and they still won a Super Bowl. And then, but Kelsey's getting older and banged up. At a certain point, you need a certain level of weapons, even if you're Tom Brady from 10 years oh, yeah. ago, even, even if you're uh, Patrick Mahomes now, you can't just. I think there was for so long Rodgers and Favre back in the day. They would just they would they would, Brady. They would make these names that you've never heard of thousand yard receivers. Right. But you need you need a certain level of talent so you can still move down the field and convert first downs. And by the way, their schedule is pretty brutal too. Yes. So well, and of the, if you fall into a hole in the AFC and you, 
You know, you got you trouble. might have to win ten or eleven games in the AFC. I mean, so. the good news is Kansas City, Cincinnati, and Buffalo are all zero and one. Right. They're yeah. all zero and one, right? Like, so I mean, you talk about the top three dogs in the AFC. Chargers are zero and one, right? Like some of the guys that won Week One versus in, in the AFC were not teams that you expected to. I agree. But I will say this: I'm not going to panic about the buck or the Bengals, <clears throat> just because of the whole situation of Joe Burrow just got back to practice. They've always normally started like this; like they're a slow starting team. I'm still not as panicked, but the Bills, that's where I start to get a little bit like, dude, what's going on? Weird vibes. What's going on, guys? We got weird Four vibes all over. Right? Four like, you're interceptions. Not, you're not supposed to do that. That's not who you are. You guys are a smash mouth team. You're supposed to go in and just bully people. And the minute that their starting quarterback and the hope of the last 30 years shows up and goes down, you're supposed to be like, our turn. And they did it. And it was like, dude, I'm a little bit panicked about that, but I'm going to double down on my Niners. You know, I love them to death. And Christian McCaffrey, my God, Sean, yeah. you are just so splendid to did watch. You, so- he spun out of that table. But can, wait, wait, before you go, because I got to talk a little shit to this guy, Pat P. <laughs> What the hell were you doing? <laughs> we know everything. We see it all. We know it all. I'm getting a pick. Dude, <laughs> that that touchdown from Brandon Ayuk over his head, around his head, through his head was epic. Like, you want to put an exclamation point on something? Kyle Shanahan's like, I want to dart at his face now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love Shanny, dude. He's a psycho, just like me. I can appreciate that. Well, going back to the Bills, you talk about I – saw, I saw, again, I was reading today. You go Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Joe Burrow. Though No, it was Lamar Jackson, too. Not Patrick Mahomes, excuse me. Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allen – Combined, they're making nine hundred and fifty million dollars. Total kind between of thing, yeah. the four of them. How many touchdowns do you think they threw this weekend? Was it zero? Uh, one? Yeah, I think it was one. 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 The one. four highest paid contracts this year for quarterbacks, and they threw one touchdown uh, on opener weekend. That's Jordan Love. Bad. Jordan Love had three, I think, yeah. for the Packers. I'm telling you, man, it's a it's a lot to do, and people are going to keep getting at me, but I'm going to keep getting pushing back. It's a lot to do with the preseason. That's getting lazy in preseason, and you show up day one like, all right, guys, we were at a three, we were almost idle, and now we're going to kick it to a 10. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. And as much as I hated being in the league and them, the coaches, and Jay, you heard the same thing because we were old school, they were like, we're going to take your tank to empty and push you past there. And you were like, God, why? Why would you want to hurt us like that? But then you get out there week one and you're like, it's like you don't miss a beat. We've just been doing this for weeks. And now we just get to put it pen to paper and go have fun. And instead, now you're watching teams that can barely take snaps. They're fumbling the ball. They're knocking the ball out of the quarterback's hands. This is why you go hard in training camp. Sure, when you put out the final product, the guy spending $24 on a beer doesn't go, this is horse shit. I want to leave. Like, I'm, you think I'm kidding. Right? Like the, 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 the decline of football has already started to happen. Oh, it hurts. It's the same reason that, Mackie, your Vikings are going to struggle this Thursday. It's the first time that anyone's been out there in a game and in the last game they just lost, and now you're coming through all of that and you're trying to figure out all the answers while you're still like, oh, it hurts so bad. It shouldn't hurt right now. You should be in the middle of it. You should be like, dude, it hurt weeks ago. I'm good to go. I can't feel my body anymore. So you're saying there should be, if there was more padded practices, more full contact practices, and if they played more in the actual preseason games, absolutely, we wouldn't see such sloppy football in the first week of the season. That's that's why the average score, I don't know if anyone scored over like 35 points this weekend. Yeah, like the Dolphins and Chargers scored points, and then everybody else was a race to The Niners scored a little bit, but everyone else, like, and it's always this way, like, Boone, you can talk to this too. At the beginning of training camp, the defense is always kicking the offense's ass. Always. Because there's so much, like, it's not as as much operational, right? It's so much more just athlete, see ball, sick ball. Like offenses have to find rhythms. They have to find plays and schemes. And that's why you always see at the beginning of the year, offenses struggle to get out the gate. They just struggle to get out the gate. And then by the end of the year, it's Bill's Chiefs and it's running up and down the field and scoring all over the place. But again, to Boone's point, a lot of that is because you don't have your full group out there playing in a real-life setting in preseason football anymore. So it's only natural that the offense is going to struggle and the defenses are going to have more success in the first quarter of the year. Because it's just like Jay said, defense is simple. See ball, get ball. For us, it's a lot of moving pieces, parts. If he goes over here, I have to move and do this. And it's just, if you're not doing it every single day, it takes a while to get into 
into a repetition and to get into a funk to get guys going. It's just, it's so much. And then I show up at these practices and you're like, what is this? What is this crap? Yeah. And everyone's like, ah, shoulder hurts. Shoulder. Did I just hear someone say their shoulder hurt? Are you out of your fucking mind? What? Like, we never were allowed to say we were hurt. We would like limp off the field. Like, no, I'm good. Good. What's funny is you guys aren't even that old. You're like in your early 30s, right? Because you guys like hearing this, it sounds a little bit like old men yelling at clouds, like what guys who would be 60 years old. But <laughs> you're saying, but you're saying the NFL has changed so much in the last 10 years since, tw since 2020. The new CBA, you've seen it. Yep. Though. You've the seen the new the new the new CBA changed right. it all. Right, and all of a sudden everyone's all... used to it, and now yeah. all of a sudden we're used to chilling, and all of a sudden we're used to we don't have to go outside, dude. I did double days and practices with Mike Singletary. He didn't care about anything. But I'll tell you what, when you got out in the <laughs> game, that guy you was knew crazy, that. man. You, dude, he was awesome. He was crazy. He was awesome. We did bull in the ring every day pre-practice. I'm not even kidding you. Every single day, it ended up breaking our center's neck at the time, and all of a sudden, <laughs> dude, okay? I'm not kidding you. You ended up having to get never a saw him again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was <laughs> one of those things. Rolled but that's how the they were ingrained, and those were Move the guys. Think about this, though. Those were the guys that were always down to play. Always down, like, no matter what. They were like, dude, whatever, whatever. And they were always trying to teach you, like, you're going to get hit every minute of this game. And if you're not ready for it, it's going to hurt. And when all of a sudden, when it hurts, you're thinking about that instead of football. And that's how you start losing games. And that's how a team can just implode on itself. Because everybody's in the training room like, God, God it sucks. It hurts so bad. Like, dude, what the it's always hurt. When has it not hurt? Well, I mean, I had John Matsko as an offensive line coach in Carolina, old Shut school up. grinder, like, and he had a great way of saying during training camp, man, it's like when you start weightlifting, you have to build calluses. You have to callous your body. You have to understand like how to get hit every single day and how to work through that so that you just become used to it. Cause once you have calluses, you shave calluses down because they're dead, right? You can't even right. feel them anymore. You have to callous your body in training camp and with the limited practices, the limited reps of full days, how many days you can go in a row, all that. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm a four player safety, 100%. I don't want anyone to think oh, that I'm not four player are. safety, but there's a fine line of it's almost not safe to not have your body ready to enter into a full contact game, 60 minute war because of the lack of practice time. That's all oh, we're all about. We're all about safety. Like we're not saying that you have to show up day one full pads. I was all about the ramp up where you used to go a whole week and you'd slowly put the pads on. We we're all about the safety, but it's just the way that these games become even like if you just even scrap practice, like the games, you guys aren't in enough live situations to be scared enough to be like, I need to work or I need to run or I need to figure this out. Like, I feel like everybody now is just like everything we do has to be perfect all the time. And you're like, dude, you're going to fail so much. That's OK to fail. Stop worrying about failing. Instead, just go out there with your hair on fire and hit somebody. And eventually you're going to figure it out really quickly or they're just going to cut you like it's become such a political situation that you're like, this is so – because the minute somebody puts something bad out in preseason, everybody's jumping on it. Did you see how bad this is instead of – and then the team's sitting back like, we're just trying a couple new things. Didn't work. We won't do it again. That's really what they're doing. And it's like I feel like everyone's so afraid of like everyone jumping on them in the preseason and seeing what we're really about. When everybody knows what you're going to do in the regular season – your, your roster hasn't changed. Your personnel hasn't changed. You've run this offense for years, or we know what you're going to run. Like, just go out and play football so that when week one comes, you guys aren't out there like, dude, oh, my God. I haven't had a 15-play drive in like nine months. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, how many guys did you see that in the season? You'd be like, God, he must be new. Well, what the back to the wrong? question, Mackie. What about you? What teams are you? What teams are you yeah, red sorry. flagged? And what no, teams are you I, doubling is, down on? I, I would well, uh, the two teams on my list. Alex has one of them. I'm doubling down on San Francisco, sure. and I was already I was high on San Francisco. I think on Purple Daily I had them like fifth going into the season or something in our you know pigskin pecking order. But my skepticism was, I don't know, man. I love Kyle Shanahan. I love the system. I love the weapons. I love the car. Can you really just pluck a guy at the end of the seventh round and and roll forward again with a Super Bowl ready team? And the answer is uh, yes. And <laughs> and spoiler alert. So we're gonna do a film breakdown of San Francisco putting yes. a beat down on Pittsburgh uh, cool. on the on the O line committee YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, please, if that's where you're consuming this. And so I had a chance to kind of dig through just from my own you know uh, fan perspective a bunch of the all twenty two film. Some of the play Brock Purdy's he's not just He's not a liability that they're trying to carry around. He's mobile. He senses pressure. He's he's fairly accurate. He can Wait, throw on the run. Like you're telling me that if somebody were running through the B gap, completely untouched, 
He would have completely. <laughs> he'd completely know to like get that. out. Of... Like that. <laughs> Such a troll. Such a troll. Hey, maybe look to the right for just a hot, quick sec. <laughs> <laughs> this is like devilish, sadistic laugh. Oh. <laughs> Are you working on Tuesday, Kirky boy? <laughs> guy oh, i guarantee oh. you his ass is in there <laughs> nope it was in there yesterday for sure <laughs> probably the trailer. other the other team and i i didn't know what to make of this team in one game it's in against against the bears defense i get it but man jordan love looks so better so much better than i thought he would look in his first game as the franchise quarterback he made some big throws um he's mobile like he was it's funny he was everything in his first game that bears fans have hoped justin fields would turn into mm -hmm. at some point Yes. So that was that was my biggest takeaway from that game is if you're a Bears fan, you're like, wait a second. No, that's how our guys that our guys our guys mobile and has an arm like our guy's supposed to look like that. Why can't our guy throw a ball, you know, a ball 30 yards down, down the like, field? We're in the wrong jersey. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to remember Christian Watson wasn't even in there. Yeah. Right. They get they get Christian hey. Watson back. Like he was a game changer for Aaron Rodgers when he got in the back half of the season last year. I mean, guy that can stretch, go, make the contested catches, big body. They get that. Romeo Dobbs, him, Luke Musgraves. They got some weapons there too. How about Aaron Jones? How good did he look? Yeah. Dude, that's Still, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, there's so many pieces and parts, and they have such a phenomenal offensive line. Dude, I'm telling I'm excited about that team. Uh all right. I've got a handful of other dumb football questions, including one thing from this last week. But I think let's let's pause the dumb football questions here. Let's make some picks and do the fat guy fantasy football update. You guys ready? Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Yes. Let's start with our uh, our picks of the week here. So actually, you know what? It's, we uh, have to recap last week's picks, don't we? No, we will. No. I just just get a little it's a little hot in here. I just oh my I have my air conditioner is is broken. I just want to make take sure it, take it off. Mackie's starting an OnlyFans. There better be a shirt on under there. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, you <laughs> dog. <laughs> You I'm are sure not a nice person. <laughs> wow. Oh, I just, oh, wow. I just, there's just this old go buff shirt hey, that I've had for Mackie, a long here's something time. even better. I... Check this out. I'm on a thread the other day with Jay and this kid that we're recruiting to come to our gym. And so this, this conversation, we're talking about random things. And I was like, oh, yeah, Jay wouldn't know. He was at the Colorado game last weekend. And this yeah. kid's like, oh, how was it? <laughs> it was great. He goes, what oh, was the super... atmosphere like? I was like, <laughs> what was the atmosphere? Phenomenal. <laughs> Listen. Was it fun? Did you have a good time? Listen, I did get my first radio analyst call, and that was a lot of fun. I did enjoy that. But oh, watching God. the Huskers play offense makes me want to vomit in my mouth. Oh. And also, Dion and crew, hats off to them. But the the fanfare and everything that's going on with that right now is out of control. Dude, I walked. I was on the field pregame. I was walking around, and I was like, is that? That's the Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. I was like, why is the Wu-Tang Clan <laughs> Dude, at one hanging point, out at Boulder right now? Like, it was, it, oh, I couldn't yeah. believe we it. I couldn't I was like, what is happening? Shout Dude, out at one Lou. point, they had, like, smoke coming out of the tunnel, and, like, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp come walking out in full suits. You're like, <laughs> yeah. what? Dude, it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a wild place to be. Boulder was a wild place to be. And, of course, those assholes rushed the fan. I was like, we, they rushed the field at the end of the game. I was like, we haven't won, we haven't won five games in the last four years we're yeah. rushing the field for <laughs> so it's exciting. hilarious man it is a, it is a beautiful setting for football but it is uh, yeah but man my sorry, buddy. are bad dude They're, sorry, listen buddy. all my football teams every team i played for in the last two decades lost this weekend huskers lost to the buffs <laughs> vikings lost to tampa Poor carolina guy. lost the bills lost the chargers lost it was a tough day to be a football fan in the searles household did your high school team win i don't know they don't count anymore okay they went down to 4a they're trash <laughs> Oh, that sucks. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's uh, let's go through the results from last week here. Jeremiah, you were two and two. So we're, we do four highlighted games every week that we expect to be good, close matchups. And we pick straight up because, yep. Jeremiah, what would you say last week about? There is no spread. You only win. Or you spreads lose. are for losers. Spreads are for losers. Okay. So two and two. You were two and two last week. Uh, Booney and I were both three and one last week. And so... I was feeling pretty good about the Bills pick when I watched Aaron Rodgers get Yeah, hurt. I was like, oh, easy win, easy money. And then Josh just goes out there and throws it to the wrong team four times. Ugh. There was a bar in Wisconsin. Time out. I'm 4-0. Excuse me. Detroit, Detroit, Niners, Jets, Green Bay. Oh, yeah. No, I thought you had the Bears. You had the Bears. <laughs> you picked the Bears. 
Bears, didn't you? No, no, no. It's yeah, he didn't. Win. He wouldn't have picked I, the Bears. I hate the Bears. Kidding me? We'll have to no. go back check the chat. We'll I don't know, man. Him. I feel like I feel like. All right, we'll give you and four Mac, and I all, but we'll go check this in. Hold on, I wrote it all down right here. No, I Mac, had Detroit, and then you Detroit. picked the Steelers, and then yep. you picked the Jets. Oh yeah, and then you picked. I thought you picked the Bears. That's why I thought you were. No one picked the Bears. Bears. No, I don't think anyone picked the Bears. Okay, no, so Alex, were. all right, congrats, Alex, four and zero, oh, straight up last week. I'll Don go back Johnny and check the, the tape because I don't. Today. He asked Charles me how I did. I said I'm four and zero, oh, dude. <laughs> He's like, how did everybody <laughs> else do? I go, not good enough. <laughs> good. You're welcome. Change your best. So, uh, uh, do I get a steak dinner? No, this is a season long thing. You know? <laughs> He thinks he gets a steak dinner every week. We're just going to do 17 steak dinners by the end of the year. I just want steak a steak and a beer. dinner. Steak and a beer. Steak and a beer. So, okay, here are the games this week. I can't remember if we were talking about something else, but here we go. Here are the games we this week. We're picking Ravens at Bengals, Chiefs at Jaguars, Dolphins at Patriots, Sunday Night Football. The AFC mm. is loaded with great matchups. And then uh, Seahawks at Lions for the fourth game. Ooh. So we'll start. We'll start. We'll just go around. We'll start with Jeremiah uh, over to Alex, and then I'll pick third. Ravens at Bengals, straight up. Who's winning? I'm going to take the Bengals. I think the Bengals get back on track. They put it back together. The Ravens looked good last week, but I got to go. I got to go with the Bengals. I think they got to figure it out. They got to lean on Joe Mixon more. I think that he ran the ball really well. I can see them as they were like, meh, maybe Joe's not as healthy as he is, starting to run the football a little bit more. And I think Joe Mixon has a big day, and Bengals win. Boney. You don't, even have to you don't even have to ask me. I'm going with my boy Joey B all day. Okay. Love him. Yeah, this is a this is a clean sweep for me as well. Uh, I do like the Ravens for the season. The Bengals are just weird at the beginning of the year sometimes. It actually wouldn't shock me if the Bengals once again dropped because they were 0-2, I think, to start last year, and then yep. they came storming back. It wouldn't shock me if they did the same thing and then they got it going. They're going to get it going at some point. I, I think it's this week, and they uh, – Let's put it this way. T. Higgins probably ends up getting shut out for zero catches. For uh, I think he had zero catches. Yes, he did. Pretty sure last week. Yep. yep. It was a so rough that's week. That's not going to be him. Uh, Chiefs at Jaguars. We know where Jeremiah's head's at here. Yep. I'm going Jaguars, baby. I think they are too good right now. They gave him a run last year in the playoffs. I think that they have their number a little bit right now. I'm going to go Jacksonville, babe. Booner. Mac, yeah, I'll let you go on this one. I want to see Jacksonville. how you're split. You're going Jackson. Jackson? All right. Yep. I got to give one to Patrick. I, I mean, I can't let this dude ride, fly solo. I'm sorry. I, I'm going. I'm going That's Chiefs. Fine. That's fine. Pick with he probably, That's always he probably feeds off our doubt specifically, right? I'm pretty sure he watches no, I, this I, show I, on Saturday me. night. You guys know I have my assumptions already made up. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, the the Jaguars were trailing at one point. They had kind of a weird start against the Colts. And then I know it's not the greatest opponent, but to come back on the road and just win by double digits anyway – after some adversity, I kind of love that. Mm-hmm. A lot of weapons. Calvin Ridley is a game changer oh, there, looks right? Great. He looks great. so good. Don't get me wrong; it's going to be a hell of a game. It should be awesome. But yeah, it's going to be a really yeah. fun game to watch. I just think Patrick's going to fall out of his slump. I think that you could tell in his press conference when they were talking about Kadarius Tony, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we got it." <laughs> AKA, I got it. I'm going to take care of this tomorrow in the room. <laughs> like, hey, that's one of those conversations when the doors close. The old line's just like. Ooh. <laughs> Finally, it doesn't really have to do with us, but it does because our tackles need to figure it out. Oh, kidding. Now what? we go to uh, let's go Seahawks Lions for the the third game here. Seahawks really rough start out of the gate against the Rams. Lions coming off a big time high, but also a few extra days of preparation and leveling themselves. Jeremiah Lions. I love what the Lions did. I love the way they looked. That offensive line looked as good as advertised. David Montgomery. And, I mean, they're going to give Gibson more touches, too. I mean, that dude didn't play at all. And Dan Campbell was like, he's a rookie. We're just going to kind of ease him in. So he's going to be gear and ready to go, too. That rushing attack for the Lions is going to be nice. Boomer, Lions. you want to? Lions. 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 I'm, you know I'm a Dan Campbell fan. I love what they're doing. Come out on Thursday night. Start it out right. Let's go. Come yeah, on, Maggie. Come do, on. I wanna, do I want to align myself? Or here's, here's weren't one, they one your thing sleeper team? Say. Weren't they your sleeper team? Yeah, you the Lions? No, the, the, Seahawks. Seahawks. the Seahawks. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, put your, team, you planted team, your flag team, last team, week and said okay, Seattle okay, can no, make no, a playoff run. Oh, okay, all right. All right. You want to bait me? You want to yeah. bait me? I want to okay. bait you. All right. Here we go. <laughs> you guys are master baiters. So, uh, <laughs> All right, so here's my take on this, okay? I'm going to 
I'm going to talk myself into this. Okay. People are probably too high on the Lions after okay. their win on Thursday, and people are probably too low on the Seahawks, and week one is weird, and the Seahawks have weapons all over the place, three really good wide receivers, uh, two interesting running backs. I'm going to say the Seahawks win a road game here to even up. I like the Lions on the season, but um, can I just Can I just say something up. real quickly? Yeah. Uh, the Lions defense looks great, and I'm, I'm almost positive I saw that both the tackles for the Seahawks might be out. Mm-hmm. That's well. They're signing funny. Jason Peters because mm-hmm. Charles Cross has turf toe. So I'm just, I'm just want you to know that. Yeah, the That's offensive line's not that important. No, you know, I think right? Just, uh, Patrick Mahomes didn't think so in the Super Bowl either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. And then the fourth game on our slate here, Sunday <laughs> night football. Yo, now the here's best the guy. Football game of the game. Oh, the best game. Uh, you know, intro. I gotta be honest with you guys. This song just plays in my head throughout the week. I mean, I will be like <laughs> Mine too. getting up in the morning. I'm going to go take a leak and brush my teeth, and I'm just like, it's time to get up now. Yeah. Dude, so I'm telling you right now, leaving a Sunday night game to fly to the airport, like to drive to the airport to fly out, there is no better feeling after a win on Sunday night because it's just I – mean, I don't know what it is. It's the ambiance. It's super dark. You see all the traffic leaving and you flying off and you're, you're putting on the TV and it's like Sally Jesse because it's super, super late and you're like, man, this is going to be a great flight back all the way to California from New York. Like just so fun. It's I love Sunday night football. I'm sorry. Yeah. We've got the Dolphins after an offensive outburst. Mm. against the Patriots, Foxborough. Jeremiah, who do you got? This is a tough one for me because I thought the Patriots Patriots came out with such a good game plan last week of how they Mm -hmm. wanted to do things on defense, how they wanted to run the football. Um, But their receiver, didn't he get lit up over the middle and, like, really hurt? Or was that – no, that was the Raiders. Never mind. Um, But I do – gosh, dang it. I want to take the Patriots here. I really do. But if Tua can play the way he did for Miami – and arguably the best wide receiver tandem in all of the NFL right now with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. I don't think they can hold them down. I don't think that they can get in a shootout. I don't think the Patriots have the offense to match if they get in a track race up and down. I got to go Dolphins. Oof, Dolphins. A little road win. Yep. All right, I can go next, Booney. You can play with me. All right. <clears throat> the Patriots, so... There was a pick six to start that game, basically. Eagles Patriots. It's kind of, a, you know, I think the Eagles were up like 16 rip or something. Yep. It looked worse. Mm-hmm. The Patriots actually outgained the Eagles by about 70 yards in that game. That game was much different if not for the pick six. But it's a pick six. It happens in football. Uh, it's not like predictive. So part of me is like, God, Bill Belichick had those guys ready against a good opponent, but. I don't know, man. That Dolphins offense is so well schemed and so fast. I'm gonna say Dolphins, but Ooh, not very, sweep. not very confidently. Okay, you clean got the sweep. Dolphins too. Oh, for sure, dude. I love the fact that they can move the ball at will, and they can just he can just stand back there so comfortably and throw that ball so well, so deep, and put it right in a pocket. I, um, I forget who was breaking down this, but I was watching the game and I was like. He just looks amazing. And it was Mike Rob um, from the NFL Network was breaking down one of his plays that he threw a ball before Tyreek Hill actually broke on his route. Mm -hmm. And it was in the perfect window. And it's like they're just on such a great trajectory. And Mike Daniels has such a great vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like he's kind of the new vibe of coaching that's like, oh, we can be here and be silly and have fun and make fun of the reporters and make fun of ourselves. (laughs) But once we come out here, we're going deep. Right, like we're yeah. throwing the shit out of the ball. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna go crazy, but we're here to win, and I love that about him. As long as Tua can stay healthy and his brain doesn't break, that's a contender well, team. And it's oh, not yeah. cold enough in Foxborough to be a contender for anybody. Not yet, like, yeah. Like if this were in December, I'd be like, oh, this Patriots all day because you're coming from Miami. But at the same time, it's early enough in the season. All's fair. I hope it doesn't rain like crazy on the East Coast again. But let's do it. Yeah. All right. There is. There's our picks. Yeah. Let's go. Bill Belichick's probably it's so mad at us. It's time for some football. So mad at us. Last week, we, we called him what? The, what'd you call him? The Sith Lord from... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now we told him his team's... <laughs> you got no chance, bro. <laughs> We're just crushing um, the Patriots. What year is it? Oh my God. Go gentlemen, it's time now for some fat guy fantasy football here. Yes. Yeah, wait trademark, wait. trademark O-line committee. So we're going to start... Uh, 
in reverse order of how well we did in week one. Damn it, Derisaw. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So we have our own proprietary scoring system here. Yes, I think we're the first show ever to try to put together fantasy football for just the trenches. So we each picked a few, it was like a month or two ago, like a yep. month, month and a half ago. Yep. We each picked six offensive and defensive linemen and then a team offensive line and a team defensive line. And you get for offense, you you essentially are looking to avoid negative points. A pressure is a negative. A sack is a minus two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if, you, if you don't rush for 100 yards, it winds up being negative. And then on defense, you get points for pressures, points for sacks, TFLs, et cetera. We don't have to explain the whole system. Just trust us. Yes. We have our Miles own scoring Garrett. system. Right. Doing the crossover. Mac, you'll, <laughs> Mac, you'll put, Mac, you'll put a key in, in the comments somewhere for you guys. Yeah, yeah. and I'm still kind of there, – there's a couple things we have to figure out. Like, I don't know. There's, well, there's an off mic. Progress. It is. You know, innovation doesn't just happen overnight yeah. here, folks. Okay. Come on, guys. This is so, great. Are you kidding me? Plus 39, that's got to be a record. Uh, well, it is a record because you were the first uh, score to be tallied. So yes! for, for a minute, it was a record. So, Booney, uh, yeah, your offense, you had a pretty, actually a pretty clean, like Jason Kelsey, clean slate, Panay Sewell, clean slate, Zach Martin. Um, your offensive line and running game scored no touchdowns and couldn't get to 100 against the Patriots defense. You had the Philadelphia offensive line. But your defense was a beast, man. Miles Garrett, Hassan Reddick, uh, Quinn and Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Matthew Judon, and Trey Hendrickson all had at least four pressures and a bunch of sacks as well. So, let's do it, you, boys. You had 39 net points. Oh, Macadac oh, had 50 oh. net points. Hey, but I'll tell you what, here. your old line would be getting cussed out right now in that oh. room. Like, Lane my Johnson. God, Shunny boy, Jim, that's 16 pressures. Yeah. Dude, Dude, that's like a 50% pressure rate in a game. That's quicker math than I expected from you right there, actually. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've had to look at the pressure rate <laughs> and the numbers? and the? Come on now. It's one could carry the five. That's a, that's a lot of pressures. Mm. I'll tell you what. Defensively, that. dude, my guy TJ Watt had six pressures, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and a tackle for a loss. Jalen Phillips had seven pressures and a sack. Pretty that's, good. That's a good defensive day right there. Yeah, Micah Parsons is going to be a problem. Yeah, he uh, is. Zach he's, Wilson, he's have fun. Problem. Have he's going to be a problem. But our guy Jeremiah Jay. took the cake in the first week here, man. Your offensive line, very clean. You had a couple guys, Ragnow and Batonio, who didn't didn't allow pressures. They took penalties. And your defense, even with a holdout, your defense was fantastic. Chris Jones is holding out. That's all right. You had Nick Bosa, Max Crosby had big games. Aiden Hutchinson had seven pressures and a wicked spin move that we will show on a mm -hmm. film review. Uh, I don't I know, know guys. Just, How about my guy, Jeffrey thing. Simmons? No one was, everyone was sleeping on Jeffrey Simmons. That dude played. Not his really. Mackey off. took the, the Titans D line. Uh, I, if, I, if there's anything to talk about, you got a lot of penalties up front. What's going on? Sloppiness? And you still got that many points? Why are uh, you hating on the winner right now? Easy 39. That's a lot of easy, penalties. Easy down dude, there, 39. I'm easy. just telling you, that's seven penalties right there. A sack. Oh, man, I'm getting your. I'm going to talk What are you talking about? How about 180 yards rushing and a touchdown, though, from my Niners offensive line? That's pretty you good. Know what? Dude, Christian McCaffrey had about a buck 50 on his own. So, dude, that's, looks a dub. Uh, that's a dub for the week, amazing. boys. That's a dub. Did you, hey, is. real quick, so, the Christian McCaffrey thing, did you see him spin out? Yes. He was so good. He's as good as advertised. If he can stay healthy, let's go. He's a good football player. Let's get us back on the uh, the, the three verts here. Yes. So, yes. all right, yes. boys, um, we've got some dumb football questions to wrap here in the last five or 10 minutes of the O line committee full podcast. Let's go. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you this one. It's more my dumb football question, but I think. It's just sort of interesting that after the Buccaneers upset the Vikings in week one, there was a, a Buccaneers radio network interview, and one of the players had said, hey, Baker Mayfield came in at halftime and said, I have stolen or deciphered the Vikings' defensive signals. When they do this, it's cover three. When they say this, it's it's uh, they're bailing back into coverage, whatever it is. Um how big of a deal is this? How big of a thing is this? An offense or a quarterback stealing? Dude, there was Vikings players like flapping their wings and stuff. I mean, that means something. So what, how big of a deal is this? I, it's hard for me to say. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't because, Like, it's really not because we, it's the old adage. Like, you should line up as an offensive line and be like, hey, we're going to run power and we're going to double team you. You still have to stop it. 
right? right? You it, players overcome that kind of stuff. Now, yeah, if you know what the coverage is and all that, it's great. But I think you could. I think the biggest thing is the fact that the Vikings didn't didn't get in Baker Mayfield's face in the second half, and so he had time to actually sit back there and deliver throws. But as far as stealing signals and stuff go, I don't. I don't buy into that too much. Like he might have thought he had an idea on a couple things, but there's no way he knew every single every coverage. Like I, I don't buy into it that much. I think if you really did know every single coverage, like like he was saying, you would have ripped that score forty five nothing. Like you'd have been like, dude, I know where all your holes are. I know where all your vacancies are. And at the same time, if you know, don't you think the coordinator knows? He's not an idiot. He's watching the same thing you're watching. As soon as you break the huddle, he's looking at the same thing you're looking at: the safeties, the defense. What are they doing? He probably doesn't hear what they're saying, but yes, he sees them flapping their wings and then dropping into cover two. He sees them do it two or three times, and he's like, okay. Flapping wings like an idiot means cover two. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Oh, they're flapping their wings. It seems like they're doing it every third and five plus. Okay, cool. Here we go, right? Like, it's not hard. It's like exactly like Jay said. We get up there all the time, and a lot of times the calls we make give away what we're doing, but the defense doesn't go, hey, they're running zone here. They just go, hey, I have this gap. I'm going to play gap sound, and if anything happens to this gap, I, it's my ass. Like, that doesn't really matter. I mean, it's great if we know a blitz is coming because then we can kill the protection to it, but you still have to block those guys, right? Like, even though we're sliding to the pressure, doesn't mean you're safe, dude. A lot of guys overextend. A lot of guys fall yep. down. A lot of guys trip. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. That's why you never play the odds of we know exactly what's going on. Dude, assume you know nothing. Just go out and tell me what you see. And then if what you see is what I see, then we'll make this happen. So, plus, it's Baker, dude. Chill, chill out, bro. <laughs> That's that's some fake news. And it's seriously, <laughs> Mackie, your Vikings. They let Baker Mayfield beat him. Come on, man. Do you want my take on it? No. <laughs> we heard your take last time. I was going to say, like, you, you killed my I, I was, was going to say, you can find it over on Purple Daily, where we just did about 17 <laughs> hours breaking that game down. Hey, I was over there with you. We had a great time over there. Are you kidding me? I yeah, love talking no. to those guys. Declan Judd, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, this is a, a dumb football question that was sent over uh, to Jeremiah last week. Is there? And by the way, you can send us your dumb football questions every week in the YouTube comment sections. We have a backlog. We will, if we haven't gotten to yours yet, we probably will at some point. So hit us up as we uh, as we keep doing these things every week. Someone says, uh, "Is there ever a point in time where guys shift from being a world beater and I'm the guy mindset?" to, hey, this is a way to put food on the table for my family and I might have to operate a little bit differently as a player. Is the motivation different or is the purity of the competition versus the guy in front of you the only thing that keeps you around long term? Go ahead, Booney. I'm going to say it's the competition. For me, it was. It was always the competition. And it was never, hey, and I never really wanted to play for 20 years. I knew after five it wasn't going to happen because you just get so broken so fast. But, I, I mean, there was never a point where it was like, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I just don't understand that question because I don't I don't think people understand the mindset that they always try to put you in. Like you're like, constantly... but were you ever like at a point where, you know, I don't really like football anymore, but I make good money. So and I'm 300 oh, pounds and talented. Oh, no, but you know? we saw that all the time. We saw guys do that all the freaking time. There was guys that would come back out of shape, out of weight, drive you nuts. Somehow they made the fucking team. I'd be like, how did this happen? Yeah. Right. And then there, there we were. Hey. Guaranteed the whole year. I'm good, man. Made week one. You were like, how? I worked so hard to be here. I don't care. <laughs> they just make me so mad. And they just, dude, some guys would laugh about it. <laughs> Bro, just stealing checks, guys. Stealing checks. You'd be like, God, I hate, God. This, guy. I hate this guy. Please. For yeah, me, it was know. always the fact I'd always come back to it. No, it was never like, oh, the paycheck's great. I'll keep doing this. But it was always the the competition for me too because I didn't realize it. And Boone, you can speak to this too. Once it's over, I, it was really hard for me to understand why. Like I felt this huge void in my life, and it was the competition. Yeah. It was the fact that I had to go into work every single day. I woke up every day going, "Okay, if I don't perform well, there's someone's going to take my job. I'm going to lose this opportunity." And at the end of the day, like I get to play a kids game as an adult yeah. and make great money doing it. But it's not until you're out of it and you're out of it for really a full year. Like once you're out of football for a full year, you really look back and go, man, I just miss competing at something in my life. Right. Yeah. And, and it, it, you find different outlets, right? You try and find different things, but you'll never, ever be able to match the competition of a day in and day out life of an NFL player. 
even in the off season, right? You're competing against yourself, your buddies, like the whole bit. And it's such a thing that you can find your identity in competition. And I think that's where a lot of guys struggle when they get out of the NFL is that is their identity and they're competing and all of a sudden they have nothing to compete against and kind of can go off the rails. And it's always good to find something else to compete in, right? Like, hey, I want to pick up golf and try and be good at that. Or I want to pick up something where I want to compete with other guys or whatever it is. But the competition for me is always what drove me. It's the thing that got me out of bed on a Wednesday in February when I didn't want to go work out. And I was like, man, I got to just do this because if I don't, someone else is. And if you don't have that mindset, you don't usually last real long in the NFL. No, you won't last at all. And honestly, that's why I think Jay and I do what we do now is because it is the competition and Mm -hmm. it is fun. And it's fun to wake up every day and have to keep competing and keep grinding and breaking down film and watching and talking and learning and keep going at it. And it's why I continue coaching a million things is because when you're out there and it might not be me competing, but it's the kids that you're with competing and it's, it's fun to be around and it's not so much like <clears throat> I can speak to Jay too. Cause Jay, you, you say this sometimes you, you don't miss the Wednesday practices. We don't miss the nine on sevens. Like I joke sometimes that I, I miss it. I don't, I miss being around the guys and I miss the, the intensity of everybody leaning on everyone to be like, Hey, we're at hundred percent now, right? Like we're ready to roll. We're focused. It's like, it's giving me goosebumps. Cause it's so fun to look at your friend and be like, yo, Let's go start a fight for the next 60 minutes. Let's go beat the shit out of everybody. Let's just go <laughs> smash faces and knock teeth out. And now you're like talking to a bunch of six-year-old girls. And you're like, I want you to crush this ball <laughs> so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's addicting because you're it like, is. I just want you to be great. <laughs> the, the biggest thing I miss from the NFL too is the accountability and the time management where it's like, hey, we got to get this fixed right now. We're going to get it fixed. And you're like, got it, on it, we're all doing it. And then you get out into the real world and the business and you send an email like, hey, this is a problem. Let's get this fixed. And like, well, I'm out of the office until Friday at (laughs) 6. So I'll probably be able to get to that early next week sometime. You're like, we'll circle back. What are you uh, talking about? I said I have a problem right now. Like, I need this fixed immediately. And they're like, well, you know, or it's like that 6 o'clock meeting. You're there at 5.58. Like, hell is everyone. Yeah. It's 6.06 walks in. Everyone's like, and you're like, Times that six o'clock meeting start, boys. Like it's that's the kind of stuff that the NFL you just it held such a standard that doesn't carry over into the real world of business and the real world of anything, and that drives me bananas. Yeah. And it drives me bananas that people don't understand because I'm glad you brought that. It's it's five fifty five. That's how we are at practice, right? It's six o'clock practice. If anyone's late, the whole team's running. So at, you know, it's five fifty nine. I'm looking down. The kids are like, please. Please, Henry, show up in 60 seconds. <laughs> show up in 60 seconds. But God it's damn teaching. Henry. <laughs> hey, it's the same thing. And I talked to the parents about it. Like, it's teaching them early. Listen, this is how life is. You should be the on time at all times. And if you're not, you should tell somebody why you're not going to be there. But it's, it's teaching them these same things that we always grew up with. Dude, Tom Coughlin used to find guys if they weren't five minutes early. I mean, this is the lifestyle that we came from where it was like, you're either on time and on time means 15 minutes early or you're going to be late. And I remember, what was it? Uh, Strahan. Strahan got fined one time because he showed up five minutes early to a meeting and he was like, wasn't 15 minutes early. I was like, damn. <laughs> it wasn't, it was, it wasn't two hours early. You didn't sleep here overnight. so. Oh, you want to talk about the pre-meeting, pre-meeting? That's the old line meeting where <laughs> yeah. the secret meeting that if you, oh, how about the times where you didn't know to show up and they were like, hey, where were you, dumbass? Like I was getting breakfast. Why? It was it was a, a meeting. Spe- it was a special teams meeting. I w- I'm not on kickoff return. It's like no, no, no. They're meeting. Therefore, we're meeting. Right. Oh, okay. Sure thing. Yeah. As a rookie, no one tells you, and you're just like, hey, idiot. If they're meeting, it's like no one told me. It's like we well, should have known. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get your I'm corn, so corn, corn, corn flakes. Yeah. Just, oh my god. No, hey, if if anyone's meeting, the O line's definitely meeting. Yep. That's all you need yeah. to know. Well, I hope you guys, when you wake up in the morning now, I hope you feel that same fire, passion, intensity for fat guy fantasy football. Mm, I hope absolutely. it's what drives you on a daily I basis. I got to call some baby. I need to call some people and be One like, hey, and oh. what the hell is this pressure shit, huh? What are yeah, we doing? You should, you should definitely uh, definitely pick up the phone and call your At guys. least none of us had uh, Glowinski. How many? He had 13 total pressures. Allowed? Day. Four sacks, I believe he allowed. Oh, no. No. I know we don't love PFF, but take a guess at what his pass protection grade was on PFF. Well, if 13%. it's not a zero, then how can five percent? One, one, Uno. one. No, oh, dude. Oh no, I'd never hey, seen anything like that bad. before in my life. You know that analyst was shaking, looking at it. <laughs> I think this is what we should give him a one percent. <laughs> it's like 
Should we bump it to a two? No, it's no, a, that's a, a one, one for that's sure. That's a one. That's a uh, hard if, one, dude. If you think that we did better than a one grade out of 100 here, please <laughs> click the subscribe button and the like button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. And also, we're trying to grow the podcast feeds too, so Apple and Spotify, if you give us a five-star rating and a positive review and go go tell a football-loving friend about the O-Line Committee, Jeremiah, Alex, Phil. This is an offensive line lifestyle podcast.